How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we're going to be doing a couple things. So like I mentioned in my previous video I am doing a giveaway so if you missed that well you missed out on this giveaway obviously uh, but I'm doing a giveaway I'm giving out 10 free Yubi keys and Shodan codes. So I think in my previous video I gave out some Shodan codes to random people um, but this time I am doing YubiKeys. I'm not being paid by YubiKey or Yubico for that matter. They didn't send me anything. Um, but I'm, I, I just, I just sent it on my server and I had seven people react. Uh, so those, you know, 10 people, once it gets to 10, will get free YubiKeys. So if you want to stay, or I guess get involved with free giveaways, join the discord down below so in this video i'm going to be talking about some different careers you can actually pursue in information security uh i got a, a little list right here that of some things i can think of uh, and compare it against the infosec color wheel which if you're not familiar with here it is that's the infosec color wheel because there's multiple different careers you can pursue in information security that you might not be aware of so they put it in a little color wheel so with that let's get into it so i'm sure we're all familiar with the red team um which is the offensive security team uh, basically they are the ones that when people think of hackers that's the go-to that's the scapegoat basically the red team is going to be the ones actively seeking for weaknesses in a company or code or whatever uh, so those are going to be penetration testers. Those are going to be like web app hackers and all of that. So some careers that you can pursue in that is going to be offensive security engineer, um, offensive security analyst, if that's even a thing. But you know, it, usually when I see like jobs in like the engineering side of InfoSec, it's like analyst, engineer, engineer two, three, senior engineer, principal engineer, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this would be like penetration testing. So you'd be on a red team in an organization or you'll be like a consultant and um, i can speak for the consulting side because i do pen testing as a consultant so like as a consultant you'll be hired on to do a penetration test and basically you have three different kinds of testing you can do you can have a white box a gray box and a black box test white box meaning that basically the client gives you everything that they want you to test so it's like here's all of these ips go at it see what you can find that's a white box test it's not as fun um, gray box is basically uh, like an exclusion list so just don't touch these ips but everything else is you know free free for you to test and then obviously black box testing means you, you basically put your your pivot box your your bastion whatever you want to call it it's like an ssh box um on the internal network and then it's just see what you can find. Those are usually fun because it's like, you'll be on like on a Zoom call with the person you're doing the test with. <clears throat> and it's like, holy shit, I just mounted a domain admins SMB share. <laughs> or like, I just I just mounted like finances whole share drive. It, it, it's pretty fun. I, I like pen testing. Um, and then obviously the flip side of that is you're hired on by an organization to be the full-time off offensive security engineers. And I don't know how that day in the life is like, so maybe I could get someone on my channel to talk about that, but I can't see it being as thrilling because it's like, usually if the blue team is pretty good, <coughs> usually if the blue team's pretty good, there's not really much I can think of that they can find, but who knows? I can only speak to what I do. Uh, and then a couple other roles in the red team, uh, you could do malware uh, reverse engineering. So that's kind of like what Google Project Zero does. So if you've never heard of them, I don't know, a link or something down below, you should check them out. There's a few uh, group of engineers at Google and their whole thing is to just break uh, frequently deployed software such as like Firefox and Apple iOS and such like that. And they just find vulnerabilities in it. Uh, and then you get things like physical engagements and social engineering. Uh, you won't typically find those as a full-time job on a like a company. It really depends on the company, but most companies are not going to be hiring uh, people do physical penetration testing. You'll probably just do that as a consultant and then hop around to different companies that will hire, hire you on contract. Uh, places that will typically need that is going to be like data centers, 
Um, that's like the big one I could think of, honestly, and like staying in tech is data centers um, and critical infrastructure. So like places like nuclear plants and such like that. Again, I've never done it, but I can only assume it's really fun to do. Uh, basically just getting paid to be a burglar. <laughs> um, so anyways, moving on to what I do full time, which is not basically everything after Red Team doesn't get enough credit for what they do every day. Um, and I'm not biased or anything, but I think they have the most impact. Um, so anyways, you got the blue team. So it's kind of the opposite of the Red Team. And usually these roles you'll find more of a full time position at a company. I'm not saying that Red Team doesn't have full-time gigs at companies, but usually at most companies, you'll f probably find a blue team being the security, the, the, the full-time security staff. So uh, blue team includes incident response, which I would never want to do. Uh, vulnerability management, which is what I do. Uh, you have network security. So those are going to be like network engineers that have a security focus. And then I don't know if you'd include this in blue team, but CTI, cyber threat intelligence. Um, so incident response, so this is pretty typical at a lot of companies. So their whole role is to respond to incidents. They are like, okay, well, we had an exposed database and someone popped it. And uh, now the, the, you kind of think of them as like um, CSI, so crime scene investigation. So they, they basically will track or they'll respond to incidents and try to maintain evidence of, you know, breach or IOCs. I guess you call it that. I don't know. We'll try to preserve as much data as possible. So like, like I said, most businesses will probably have an incident response team. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video real quick. I kind of did the incident response team a little dirty by not explaining the other portion of what they do in the video. So think of them as firefighters as well as CSI because Typically, if you find an incident, you will page the incident response team and they will actively work on to mitigate that risk as well as preserve any data as it happens so they will respond to events they will pull in people as needed so if i'm just like a help desk analyst and i'm like oh shit, this computer has like ransomware on it or something i don't know uh, i would engage incident response and then they will be able to pull strings and they will have a pretty good documentation of like okay, well, this team does this. Let's bring them in on this, you know, call. This team can do this. So they, they, they will pull in people as needed. And then once the incident is clear and done, they will preserve all that data. And then they will probably end up writing a report afterwards uh, called an incident report. Um, so that goes back to what I said. I don't ever want to be on incident response, but uh, I, I do I do appreciate everyone that does work in incident response because there's no way in hell I would want to do it myself. On with the video. I don't know. I don't do IR. I've done a few IR cases myself where I've like proactively found incidents on GitHub and such like that. So I guess you could call that IR. Um, it, it, like, like I said, like in, in InfoSec, there's like, different there's there's no like one textbook job like like i said incident response they usually respond to incidents but like i've proactively found incidents so it's kind of weird so next up vulnerability management this is what i do full time um and basically they scan it they, they scan the network to find vulnerabilities so you'll typically find products such as nexpos insight vm Tenable IO, Tenable SC, Qualys, etc. Uh, those are going to be scanning platforms, and they basically you have different levels of vulnerability scanning you could do. You could do unauthenticated remote checks, which is basically Nmap, uh, remote credential checks, which is basically the scanner logs into a computer and then checks for like KBs on Windows hosts and such like that. Basically checking to see if it's up to up to date on patching pulls down things like the NetBIOS name, DNS name, users logged in, etc., like that. And then you have agent-based scanning, which is like a little piece of software installed on a computer, and it sends up vulnerability reports to a central location. Uh, Vuln management is pretty fun if you like analytics and you like a lot of data. Uh, basically, uh, you can think of it like this, like if you have an enterprise environment, you have, you know, let's say 100,000 IP addresses and you wanna scan everything, you could basically, get all of that data and aggregate it into tools such as Kibana or Tableau 
and you can like build all these cool visualizations and prioritize vulnerabilities like well we have this vulnerability that's really easy to exploit but there's only like 10 devices that are internal on the internet or in uh, internal network and you have like all of these devices that are internet facing but it's kind of hard to exploit which one do you prioritize so that's kind of what vuln management does i find it pretty fun it's a boring job on the surface but the more you get into it the more the more i find it find it being fun uh next up netsec so network security um i i used to be a networking guy until i moved over to security so it's basically just that it's i again i don't do this full time so i might be blowing smoke up your ass right now but uh, you know, separating networks, determining how to, I guess, make it hard for a, an attacker to pivot throughout the network and such like that. Um, again, if you do, if anyone watching this does any of this stuff full time, hit me up. I'd like to get you on my channel. Um, and then cyber threat intelligence. So again, like I don't know if this would be blue team or not, but uh, this one's actually really fun. It's proactively finding vulnerabilities and threats. Uh, so you'll get products like Recorded Future that do this pretty well. Um, and it's basically CTI and Vuln management kind of go hand in hand. So we have all these vulnerabilities, but how do we prioritize patching them? Cyber threat intelligence will add context to that. It's like, well, all these vulnerabilities, there's no you know exploit. No one's actively exploiting them and such like that. But you have these vulnerabilities over here, like ten, you know, a, a small number of them uh, vulnerabilities on the network, and you know. The, the freaking entire country of China is exploiting it right now. So it's fun stuff. I, I really like cyber threat intelligence. Um, next up, we got the yellow team. So this is going to be software engineers. I have no clue what the hell they do all day, honestly. <laughs> uh, but this is going to be a lot of automation. I know there's like a different part of the color wheel that's like specific to automation, but I, I'm i just going to call it yellow team. So these are going to be software engineers that have a security mindset. Again, if you do a task throughout you know your day and it's like repetitive this is where the yellow team comes in and frees up your time so the way i view the yellow team is um is kind of like a cost saver of infosec because uh, by nature uh, information security is a cost center in most businesses meaning it costs money to run the program they don't produce um, any product unless you're a security based company like tenable and such like that uh, so if it costs like 10 million bucks a year to run InfoSec, if you can bring that number down as much as possible, the better without, you know, sacrificing anything. So if you can automate a task, so, so an anecdote, so like vulnerability management, if you, uh, if you, you currently run like ad hoc vulnerability scans at work, there is a way you can automate that because you got to calculate the time, like, Hey, I got to log into Tenable. I got to, you know, blah, 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 blah. Let's say it takes 10 minutes, but you know you're going to have to spend that 10 minutes every single day. Yellow team comes in, makes a cron job. Just like that, you save 10 minutes a day. You calculate the cost savings and that and all that. So it's good stuff. They, they, they really help us out a lot. Um, so it's going to be a lot of automation, a lot of usage of APIs. So if you're brand new to APIs, I would highly suggest you download a piece of software called Postman put a link to it down below it's i i you know as much as i love using uh linux command line uh yeah i i don't i don't like using it for apis <laughs> um and then it goes back to analytics like i said earlier so taking all this data and aggregating it into things like tableau and kibana and make things super nice and stuff and of course they make um you know i guess user interfaces so if you want to run a cool VM program, suggestion for you is to take that data, all that scan data, put it into a dashboard, and then have it be, I guess, digestible for like your CISO or like different managers throughout the network. So they're like, oh, here are my IPs. Here's the vulnerabilities that I own, how to mitigate them. So anyways, uh, next thing is orange team. So this is what I do on this channel. So Orange Team is teaching, um, user training and all that. So I make YouTube videos, I train, I, I let people know about, you know, InfoSec and OSINT and stuff like that. So uh, I don't I, I don't know if many businesses honestly have an Orange Team. Uh, you'll have you'll have organizations like Habituate. I think that's what you say, how you say it. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a user end user security awareness training that's like not cringy 
Um, I'm looking at you, U.S. military, U.S. Army specifically. I saw your online profile said that you were here, so I thought I'd swing by. It's pretty cringy. Um, and then it's also going to be like speaking. So if you talk at Black Hat, you're probably blowing smoke up people's asses. And so uh, those are some things to take a look out for uh, when searching for various jobs in InfoSec. And then also what I recommend um, is just looking up any of these things. So like just go like on like Amazon.jobs or IBM careers or, you know, whatever. And just like look at some of the job requirements. Now, I will say that like the minimum qualifications don't don't look at that put your eyes over that honestly i think like hr or whoever writes them they don't know what they're talking about uh like dumb it down a lot uh like if if you've had an infosec job for like three or four years you're considered a senior level even though it'll probably say you need a doctorate's degree and competed in five different olympics just take a look and then kind of set yourself up for that i'll put some resources down below for different books in each of these different areas um, so you could take a look at that and then dive in a little bit more. And then if, and again, if, if you're part of like anything outside of Vuln management, uh, hit me up. I'd like to get you on my channel and you could talk about uh, what you do, um, every day. Uh, if you want to get divulging client info as well, I mean, I'm not going to say no to that. Anyways, that is it for this video. If you enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, uh, and the bell notification. Just want to, just want to make clear the uh, Shodan codes were given and donated to me by Shodan themselves so I just wanted to make that clear Shodan reached out to me and gave me a significant amount of Shodan codes to give away so thank you Shodan for all of that support for my channel even though I give y'all a lot of advertising for free <laughs> anyways that's it for this video y'all take care goodbye I can't believe that you are always at the right place